Tablighi Jamaat, A House Divided, Part 3. So in this section, what I'll be looking at is the topology of Islam in the United Kingdom. The image that you see was taken from an academic called Sadiq Hamid, and it's called Applying Ramadan's Six Major Islamic Tendencies to the British Muslim Context. This is an overview, a topology of the major Islamic groups and strands within British society today. If you start from the right, you have literal rational reformism, then you have Sufism, then you have Salafi reformism, political Salafi literalism, scholastic traditionalism, and Salafi literalism. If you compare these names with the information I provided in the last video about the number of mosques that currently are established in the United Kingdom, you see the term Salafi and Salafism having a lot of play on the British Islamic scene. They have very few numbers in terms of mosques and adherents, but they are clearly a lot more influential than the other groups. Now, I don't need to read all these groups and trends and sects, but suffice to say, a group that has a strong ideology, a strong epistemological, a strong methodology is able to influence British Islam. The Diobandi stroke Tablighi Jamaat falls under the scholastic traditionalism. And as I'll show later on in this presentation, it has cognates within the Taliban movement of Afghanistan and the Jamaati Ulama movements in Pakistan. These are all cognates. And in a later video, I'll also describe and analyze and look at how Salafism is conflated with Tablighism. The next image shows us three different prongs. We've got the puritanical, then we have the radical, and then the reformist. This time we're going from the left to the right. We see again that Salafi reformism, political Salafi literalism, and Salafi literalism it has a lot, it has a great influence on British Islam. And this is simply because it has, in my opinion, a strong theological, methodological, epistemological underpinning. Whereas the Diobandi Tablighi Jamaat strand falls, like the Salafi literalism strand, within the puritanical prong of this diagram. That is the topology of the groups present currently within Britain. And you should pause those screenshots and study those names and those terms because that is exactly what's happening in regards to Islam in Britain today. Now on to the history of the TJs. So the TJ was founded in 1926 by a man called Muhammad Ilyas Kandalawi. And it was found in a place called Miwat province, which was the southwest of Delhi. And Kandal Kandalawi viewed Islam in that particular region at the time as being in a depraved state 
That's the word used by Peary. And he decided that he had to do something to change this state. He started organizing transnational structures and organized annual gatherings in both Pakistan and Bangladesh. And if you look at a recent gathering in Bangladesh in a place called Tongi, there was a claim that two million attendees attended that gathering in Tongi in 2010. And the wrapping up procedure, the wrapping up ceremony, there was a claim that five million people came to the final day's blessings. If you compare this with Shia gatherings, they claim similar numbers. In fact, the Shia gatherings claim up to 10 million. The Hajj claims about 2 million. So this is clearly a huge Islamic world movement. And in this particular instance, it's in Bangladesh. So the, the, the Tablighis themselves, according to Piri, they ascribe themselves to a revivalist strand of Islamic socio-political thought. And it was as a reaction to the demise of the Mughal Empire and what they perceived as being the ascendancy of British India. And this, according to Piri on page 103, led to the evolution of the Diobandi strand of Islam. He mentions on page 106 that the TJ is not alone in emerging from the Diobandi strand of Islam. And he says that both the Taliban in Afghanistan, as well as the Jamati Ulama, Jamaat Ulama'i Islam in Pakistan, share the same ideological origins. And this also links them and this revivalist nature and this reaction to British India also links them to the Salafist trend of thought as well. Specifically talking about the Jamaat al tabligh we found that different socio-political contexts within these movements highlighted the diversity and the adaptability of the movements to their particular contexts. So the thesis that Piri, Piri wrote argues that the London TJs clearly showed transformational qualities, whereas their Diobandi Tablighi brothers in Dewsbury, to use Sikhan's word, were outmoded. They failed to transform, they failed to develop. Next, I will come to the genesis of Jamaat Tablighi, taken directly from the experience of the founder, Muhammad Ilyas. Stay tuned. <laughs>